Hello and welcome, I am Chef Gary and today I'll be showing you how to make money off buying and selling CSGO skins on the Steam Community Marketplace. To get started, you need a few basic things. First, you need access to the Steam Community Market. To do this, you must have Steam Guard active on your Steam account. That's the dual factor authentication app on your phone. Next, you need to have one of the following Google Chrome extensions. Steam Inventory Helper, Steam Wizard, or CSGO Float Market Checker. None of these are sponsored, nor are any of them malicious. They are free and safe to use. Personally, I use Steam Inventory Helper the most because I find it the fastest of the three and I think the layout is the nicest, but I only keep it on when I'm using it. Whichever one you pick doesn't really matter. They all do the same thing, it's just personal preference. They all look a little bit different. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be demonstrating Steam Inventory Helper. Next, you must understand what we're doing. This is not a glitch, and it's not an exploit. We're going to be buying CSGO skins with a low float off the Steam Community Market at a normal price, and selling them back at a higher price, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Lastly, to get started, like the saying goes, you must spend money to make money. You must have some money in your Steam wallet balance. This is not free, but you only need a few dollars to get started. If you don't have any money, don't worry. Check your Steam inventory and you'll probably find some free money lying around that you may not have even known you had. Steam trading cards, profile backgrounds, stickers, skins from other games that you don't need or use, etc. 6 cents, 10 cents, 8 cents, 3 cents, doesn't matter. Just sell enough of it on the market to accumulate a few dollars and that's enough to get you started. If you don't have anything in your inventory, ask your mom, ask your dad, brother, sister, or get a job, treat yourself to a $10 Steam card, and that'll do it. Personally, I started with a $20 Steam gift card that I got for Christmas three years ago, and I've built up from there ever since. Now that you have at least a few dollars in your Steam wallet balance, one of the three Chrome extensions, and access to the Steam community market, you can now start making some real money. Now, it's very important to know what a CSGO skin's float is. Basically, a float is a number that designates how clean a CSGO skin is. The closer the number is to zero, the nicer the skin will look in most cases. For example, this is a minimal wear P250 whiteout with a float of 0.142. Now this is a P250 whiteout minimal wear with a float of 0.089. It's the same skin, the same gun, with the same wear. However, the floats are different. As you can see, the lower float can make a huge difference in appearance, and people will pay a large premium for the better looking skin with the lower float. For the most part, you're going to be looking at skins that are either field tested, minimal wear, or factory new. Field tested floats range from 0.15 to 0.35, so when you're looking for skins in the community market, you want to find skins that are as close to 0.15 as possible, because those are going to be worth more than say a skin that's point. 32. Minimal wear floats range from 0.7 to 0.1499999, so you want to find skins that are as close to 0.7 as possible, but usually anything lower than 0.10 is going to net you a profit. Factory new floats range from 0 to 0 0.06999999, and again the closer to 0, the more expensive the skin will likely be, so you want to target 0 0.01 and below. The way you're going to find skins with a low float is with one of the three extensions that you got earlier. These extensions will show up on the Steam Community Marketplace and show you the float of every skin that you're looking at. So this is what the market looks like without any of the extensions active. There is no way for you to check any of the floats unless you click on every single one and view them in game. But with one of the extensions active, now you can see all the information you need right on the page and it becomes much easier to find what you're looking for and make a profit. The Steam Inventory Helper extension will also let you sort by float, so it becomes even faster to find what you're looking for. So when you find a skin that has a low float at regular market price, you're going to buy it and you're going to sell it at a couple dollars higher so you can make a profit on it. These are just a few examples of what I look for on a daily basis, but there are many more on the market that you can find for yourself with a little bit more time. You can find what works for you and what nets you profit. Trial and error is not a bad thing. 
I like to kind of keep tabs on the skins that I look for by leaving buy orders on them, but you can do what works for you. Here's an example of what you want to look for. Market price for this StatTrack CZ Crimson Web Minimal Wear is around $5 to $6. You can see that there are a lot of spikes in the price though, as some go for well over double the average. Those are the low float sales. So you're going to try to find one that's at market price, $5 to $6 and has a low float using the, one of the extensions, and you're going to sell it back for more. Here I find one for $6.13 at a low float at .098, and I'm going to sell it for a few dollars more for a profit. Keep in mind that not all skins with low floats are going to be worth more than regular ones, so check the marketplace and make sure that you see bumps in the prices like this, because that means people are regularly buying the low float skins because it makes a difference. Here's an example of when you really need to be careful. Yes, as you can see there are two low float skins here, but don't just buy every low float that you see. Check the prices on them to make sure that it's still profitable for you. On the sales graph, you can see that the spikes rarely go above $3.50. So with the taxes that Steam takes, you'll actually lose money by buying these. So make sure you always, always, always check the prices to make sure you're getting a good deal. Here's just a few of what I've bought and sold recently. The $6.13 Crimson Web from earlier sold for $8.43 after taxes were taken. I bought an AUG Momentum Field Tested for $5.79 and sold it back for $8.43 after taxes were taken. Bought a P250 Whiteout for $7.21 and sold it for $8.69. Sometimes the skins you're trying to sell take a little bit longer than others. Sometimes they'll sell in an hour or two, and other times it'll take up to maybe a week or a week and a half. It depends on how the market is doing at the time. But if it takes longer than two weeks for you to sell a skin, your price is probably too high and you'll need to lower it a little bit. I check the market maybe once or twice a day. Really it's 50% knowledge on what to look for and what to sell things at, what the skins actually go for and 50% luck, because some days you're just not going to find anything available, and other days you'll find a lot. Back in my kind of prime a couple years ago, I was buying and selling really expensive skins, 200 plus dollar knives, but since then I've cashed out most of my inventory, because the market on those big ticket items fluctuates a lot. However, I still use this method of buying and selling because it's really easy to do, it only takes 5 minutes out of your day and you can make a few bucks here and there and I use that extra steam wallet to buy games and other skins that I play with. Something to keep tabs on would be steam sales. For example, in a couple weeks, the steam summer sale 2019 is coming up. Skins prices are going to drop quite a bit because people will be selling everything they have in order to buy the games that are on sale. So knowing this and being the smart and economically savvy buyers you are, you'll take advantage of the market and buy skins for cheap during the sale and sell them back for a big profit afterwards. Anyway, I hope you've learned something from this guide. Feel free to drop a like if this helped you and a sub if you'd like to learn more. Thank you for watching and happy hunting.